haven't been able to just find that recipe that was consistent for them throughout the split. Yeah, let's not forget it was a team that was 4-0 at yeah. DreamHack, and we were like, Whoa, wow, these guys are here to perform. Picks and bans coming through. Fizz taken away. Sharu still. Every single game, actually. I'm pretty sure Meatwick has had that banned against yeah. them. Fiddlesticks also. Libic's not going to be able to pull that one out. Lissandra and Shen taken away. They're probably pleased so as that he doesn't actually get to play Shen because although... So Elise is the question. I saw him playing it in rehearsals. Elise is the question for me here. Whether or not Fnatic want to try first pick it or if they're going to let it slide through and maybe like insta lock a thresh, mm -hmm. which is what we've been seeing. We've seen the vein thresh combo out of Push and Yellow Star yesterday, and it, it did fairly well, but it wasn't enough for Fnatic to pick up victories. There is the Ari ban, so Char is not going to get to do that one. He will be casting, which means Twisted Fate, like you said. Elise, will it be first locked? It was first picked a few times yesterday by Fnatic. Will Soaz feel confident enough to go with it? Because it did not work out well against Evil Geniuses. It did not, and it was also a situation where, um, you know, Soaz was put in a, in a 1v2 lane. He's, he's so vocal, he dislikes those lanes so much, to be honest. And I, I think against Meet Your Makers, Fnatic may actually try to go for a straight skill matchup. They might say, look, let's go 1v1 and 2v2 and try to predict where MYM are going to put their solo and duo laners to try and deal with it. I wouldn't be surprised to see Lubick maybe pull out a support Zyra during the course of this game because he has played so much of it during the course of the split. You know, so is his expression. You never know when he's happy or sad. He generally always looks that same way. I've said this before. And I, I distinctly remember saying it to him when he just won the 1v1 at Shanghai. It's like, do you mind telling your face that you're happy right now? Because you've just beaten the best players in the world in a 1v1. And right now he's sick and he's exactly the same expression. Look what we have locking in for Meet Your Makers, though. Nunu being picked in the jungle for Makata, we're assuming that's where he's going to stay. At the moment, Thresh is being hovered on and has been locked in for Libby. So that's double take. Uh, as opposed to going for the Zyra, which is what I thought they may think towards, they've denied that from Yellow Star as he has been playing a significant amount of it during the course of the last couple of games in the LCS and in uh, solo queue as well. In terms of the Nunu pick, the early game is going to be very, very important. And we can expect invades and uh, trying to deny jungle camps from Fnatic. I know what I expect. I'm not expecting anything. Back doors. <laughs> it could be happening. Will we see the backdoor king doing what he does best? Varus also being locked in for push you, but more importantly, Twisted Fate, the new Twisted Fate of 3.10, locked in by the Twisted Fate king. So with Twisted Fate being locked in, you've got a lot of mobility to at least respond to the Nunu gangs. So this is something that's going to put more pressure on Makate to choose the time when he invades once we get to that sort of 7 to 15 minute mark. Because uh, not only can Peke, you know, run around the map and, and, and try to counter those invades, he'll be able to use the Destiny and jump there even quicker. But that most likely will be followed up by Charu with Teleport, because nobody's surprised he's going to be picking that. Yes, the question is what champion will he have? Will he be Ariana? Carthus has been hovered over as well. You've seen a number of them. Macklet having discussions there on your screen. He's locked in Twitch already. We'll see which way it's going to go. Wukong being switched back to and selected. So will that be Kubon in the top lane? Or will Charu be pulling out the Funky Monkey? Traditionally, we see Wukong in the top lane. And traditionally, we only see Wukong when it's a counter pick. When it's a situation of, right, for example, Wukong can do very well against Irelia in early game. Irelia's fallen on the favor then because mm. we don't see her. We don't see Wukong as often. Wukong against Elise, if they are going to go straight one-to-one, -one, is going to be straight skill. Whoever's able to get damage early on is going to be able to win that one out. But a strong advantage in favor of Elise, thanks to her range and to the built-in sustain in her spider form with those little baby spiders. But that's going to throw Fnatic for a loop. I don't think... I don't think they were prepared to deal with a Wukong. Ooh, Lee Sin getting locked in. Cyanide played it yesterday. Managed to get that Baron still worked out well. And Leona being picked by Yellowstar as support. A champion that N-rated, of course, was famed for and did get replaced in Fnatic. We're going to see the repercussions that that could play out. This, I mean, we've had, sub, uh, I say substitutions, we've had roster changes all season. It's going to be so interesting, the story that will develop, like, who makes it? Who doesn't make it? Did that roster change work? Did that one backfire? Because this is the this is the final day that everybody was aiming at when those roster changes happen. With the exception of maybe Lee Sin in this particular composition. This is like a spring split Fnatic mm. composition. This is, you know, going back to, as a team, the sort of champions you would associate with them when Yellowstar was playing Varus, and when Enrated was playing Leona. The thing that I like about it is there's a lot of inbuilt synergy. Mm. There's a lot of crowd control, a lot of damage that can come out, and mobility as well. So, if Meet Your Makers lock this in, which they have, 
in Kalavitsa last year, or this year, in fact, this it was January. January. A little long year. Uh, <laughs> in January, Charu actually did run Wukong in that mid lane. So it's it's going to be a, a better matchup, I think, than against the Elise. The one thing I am concerned about from Angel Makers is they have nothing to hold Fnatic in place outside of Absolute Zero, which is very difficult to guarantee, and the box to, to make the Equalizer and the Cyclone deal damage. You generally want to stick all of that CC with the likes of Azira because you can lock them down and get that damage out. I was sat thinking, does he does he remember the name of Wukong's ultimate? Yeah, it's Cyclone. <laughs> I know, I know. I can see you build it up. I was like, is he, does he remember? Of course he knows of course I do. it. Of course he Crushing knows Crushing blow, it. Deco, decoy, number strike, Cyclone. Boom! <laughs> so there is Pushu on your screen. The pressure really is on Fnatic, ladies and gentlemen, because they are zero for three in Super Week so far. They've got to pick up a win. 13 and 13. They have to have a win because Evil Genius is already at 14-13. They cannot let everybody slip out of their grasp. Almost certainly the fact that uh, a lot of these teams actually face off against each other today, the pressure will be on. 13 and 14 for SK. SK only play one game today, so the best they can go is 14-14. Fnatic, they can go that same way. They have two games. The fate is in their hands. The question is... Can they take it? And you can tell the pressure is very much on these boys right now. If anybody can deal with pressure, though, it will be Fnatic. Remember that they were in the promotion tournament in Warsaw earlier in the year, qualifying for the LCS, and they had their backs against the wall, against Alternate, in fact. They were losing for 20 minutes in the matchup and managed to pull that one back. So Fnatic are definitely going to be well aware of these high-pressure situations. It's interesting to see the stark contrasts in expressions. Fnatic, they are such stern, serious faced. And we just saw Sharu there. Big grin, smiling, laughing. Mia Makers are relegated already. The pressure's off them. They are focusing on the relegation tournament, the spring tournament, which will be happening later on in the year. And at the moment, it is all about Fnatic. How will they handle this pressure cooker situation? The first game of the day, and a game they absolutely must win because their one and only other game is against Gambit, which is the final game of the day. God only knows what the pressure will be like if they don't win this match. Fnatic, though, they're going to be starting as the blue team. Meet Your Makers as the red team. We're going into the game. And I'm secretly hoping that Meet Your Makers play with Reckless Abandon because their champions can, have, can be so exciting and fun to watch. The last time Charu did play that mid Wukong, it was actually in the promotion tournament, um, you know, six or so months ago. So it's something that he's familiar with. And the Teleport Cyclone Ganks will be terrifying. Oh, they got the ward, thanks to the pink. Um, and, you know, if he manages to hit six, teleport into a lane, and get, you know, a, a Makla or Cubon on a roll, then they can really just lock down and secure that mid-game uh, after one or two good ganks. So, let's see, there was actually a fairly deep ward placement coming out from Meet Your Makers there. The tri bush and the bottom lower bush towards those golems. And, now, actually, Fnatic look like they're, they're poised to go for those columns, despite the fact we are on 3.10 patch here. They will be spawning later on. I expect a little bit of help here for Cyanide on the red buff, but look at the way they're hanging around. It's going to be interesting to see how it pans out, because for the time being, that's, that's a ward that is very uncommon at this stage. Uh, what you could associate it with is like a, a lane level one kill, where people gank, you know, uh, camp the bush, wait for someone to walk past, and then jump on them. But they're a little you know, far away for that really to be the case. So it may have just been, we're confident Fnatic's not there. Let's just get vision and see if they're going to, uh, uh, what time they get to lane. So Makata will be starting out on the blue buff on Nunu. He's going to be getting the help of his bottom lane, and it looks like Sinan's taking the red buff here with the help of his bottom lane. Standard meta actually being used here for all the teams, or both teams. There's only two teams generally on the rift. If there's a third, there's a bit of a problem with the game right now. Makata, he is taking the blue buff, and you can see down this bottom lane, it will be Yellow Star on Leona and Pushu on Varus up against Libic, who's going to be on Thresh, and the Rat, Makla. I'm going to get a little bit of, you know, obscure for a second. On MYM's side of the map, there is only one team. On Fnatic's, there's five. Because it's everyone else in the standings peering over their <laughs> shoulders, adding the weight. In terms of this bottom lane, it's, it's whoever can land the respective skill shot. If Thresh can catch Varus or Yellowstar can catch Twitch, they should be able to basically burst them down because there's a lot of damage that can come out from both of these dual lanes. Oh, the CS will stay close, and like you say, if Leonic does manage to lock up that round, it will be a lot of damage, but the play would follow straight away. Makata, he's on the red buff. Cyanide's already taken blue buff, double buffed up, heading towards his top lane. Lee Sin can be a very quick jungler, 
He wants to see if he can get on towards Kubon very early on and help out Soaz. He really needs the help this week. Yeah, especially because of how Soaz has been performing in the course of the last few games. Cyanide once again advantage. Now, Kubon has got his Flash, his Electro Harpoons, and his Scrap Shield. So he's got the movement speed and the damage block. And here they go. Unfortunately, the movement speed from that W on Rumble is actually very powerful at these early stages of the game. Yeah, managed to get away no problems at all there. Mid lane, now we haven't really talked about this one a great deal, but it is Peke on the new Twisted Fate, which is where you can see that extra goal going towards him. Up against Charu on Wukong, who, if he can get on Peke, will do a hell of a lot of damage. Charu has to continually play aggressive like that or run the risk of being poked down by the long-range auto attacks of Peke. He's got that decoy where he can stealth up and maybe even block a gold card. And as long as Charu can continually do that, it'll play in his favor and he can actually win out the lane early on until Peke has got that superior wave clear. And the danger is that Peke, while he's got that destiny, he can go somewhere. Charu's got the teleport. He always has it. Nimba Strike in Cyclone. He can destroy any counter that Peke tries. Yeah, that's the truth. He can interrupt the destiny, number one, or obviously jump into the, the respective lane to counter gank himself. What we are seeing, though, is that this uh, ranged HP-based harass from Elise is forcing Kubon very, very low. He is sitting on a Rejuvi bead, so as long as he plays a little safe, he should be safe. So Pink Ward was actually picked up by Charo, so he's looking to try and make that one down. Looks like he's put it in towards the bush, and he can see a ward in that top bush as well. That's in the mid lane. Cyanide, he was paying a slight bit of attention to this bottom lane, which hasn't began too much aggression just yet. They are up to level three. We'll see if any advantages get gained from that one. But okay, he's returned back to this mid lane, got himself a Doran's ring, continues to try and ply the pressure on towards Charo, who himself went back and got himself a Doran's blade and straight away Nimbus strikes onto Peke. This is what we talked about. This is how much aggression he's going to do. Use it the decoy, Peke actually being fooled by it. Yeah, so well played by Charo to at least use the decoy after landing a damage. Peke didn't pull a card though. He wasn't in the pick a card phase. So there was no gold card to stun. And I think Peke is going to be well aware of the potential trades back and forth that could actually go down. I want to highlight Cyanide's uh, posturing though, because he's cleared out his jungle. You can see there's no jungle camps on the bottom uh, half of the map, and he's just trying to find opportunities. And you do see this uh, death sentence lands there. Call Yellowstar. It's on towards Yellowstar, but is that who they want? Makla's actually being aggressed on, and now they're in trouble. He's going to try and get away from this one. Using Ted first blood gains there. Now Cyanide tries to join the party, but he's going to get locked up. A great play coming out from Limic. They get a second. Pushy might not be able to escape this one. There's the Ice Blast, he has to flash away, and that was two kills. Very good kills for Meteor Maker. It's not now over. Charu on towards Peke. He's going to try and pull out the red card. Didn't get the stun card. Yes, he did. And now Charu's in trouble. Tries to lay out the card. Charu, with no mana, uses the ghost to escape. And if Charu had Ignite in that engagement, he would have been able to kill Peke during the course of the fight. I want to highlight on the bottom lane, Makla sidestepped the Zenith Blade from Yellowstar and then sidestepped the Sonic Wave from Cyanide. He saved his own life and continued auto-attacking while that was happening. Fnatic, down two kills, and are gonna be down a dragon at seven minutes in the game. That's a 2,000 gold swing seven minutes in. That's pretty huge already. And as you mentioned, there are a number of teams that will be watching this up in the player lounge, absolutely cheering Meet Your Makers on right now because they want no pressure on their matches. They want to buy themselves a little bit of time. SK Gaming, they're at 13 and 14. They would be equal with Fnatic if they were to lose this one down in joint seventh place, second, it, sixth place. Second. It is a very scary position for Fnatic, but their composition can easily bounce back. Thanks to the high kill and high pick potential on Elise, Leona, Twisted Fate, Lee Sin, all they need to do is wait until uh, Peck is six, as he is now, and let the Destiny gang come in. If it is an unsuccessful Destiny gank, Fnatic are in dire, dire straits. Going into the next Dragon Battle will take place in a couple of minutes. Well, Makata's just been warned that there is a ward down there, so you're not going to be able to land this gank on towards Peke like he was hoping to do. Instead, he's got himself in the Tribush. There is no ward in the Tribush, and they're going for a red buff invade here. He's coming round. Actually, Cyanide on that red buff. He can just walk in and smite this one. Steal it straight away from under the nose of Cyanide. Cyanide does come round. He steals it. That is massive. The experience, the gold, and the clean exit from, Mak from Makate. We were talking about how impactful Nunu can be in the early stages of the game, and that's playing it perfectly. I also just want to remind you, if Fnatic lose this game and they are tied to their SK, it is Fnatic in relegation because they are behind SK in head-to-head. -head. Yeah, 3-1 behind, if you remember. That's how that much important Ember's matches were over the season. 
And what a big turnaround it has been for SK Gaming so far in Super Week. Cyanide on his blue buff. That won't get stolen away. It's going to be given across to Peke, though. And the blue buff itself will be started off. Makata helping that one out. I don't believe he's going to give it across to Charo either. So Makata will continue to pick up that buff. And he's just going to keep on driving forward. Nope. We'll I think they would. I think they yeah. would. Because uh, Charo is so dependent on cooldown reduction and his mana costs are relatively high, the more... Uh, Nimbus strikes and crushing blows he can land on Peke, the easier his lane is going to be. What I want you guys to keep your eyes open though is the mini-map. Uh, the bottom lane of MYM is very, very pushed. They're sitting at the Fnatic Tower and that is just calling x to gank. So keep an eye on him as he's got blue buff. He may decide to destiny. His Cuban's been cocooned. Damage on towards him, but he puts the equalizer down, locks him into position. Cyrus has to repel away from this one, and it was a fairly even trade between the two. Kubon not too upset about that one. At the end of it, Soaz wins the trade. He got the equalizer cooldown, and he got the ignite cooldown. So yes, damage was traded evenly. The next time Soaz picks the fight, he will win against Cubon. We'll see how that works out as it stands. In terms of CS, I'm quite surprised to see that Kubon is ahead in that one. Peke is winning out the mid lane battle, and uh, down the bottom it is fairly even trade, despite the kills, obviously, heavily in favor of Meteor Makers right now after that double buff. Here we go, Destiny Use, he's going up towards the top lane. Of course, Kubon already trying to put the pressure on towards Soas. Makata was there, simply used his defensive mechanism. Destiny blown, though. That's the cooldown unavailable for the next time he needs to be used. Peck has been jumped on. Cyclone coming out from Charo, putting the pressure back on towards him. Nimbus strikes back in the stun card, though. Replies, throws out the wild cards. No, not going to land it on towards Charo. He sidesteps that one. And Peck, wow, he's got to be dangerous. Uh, got to be careful. Sorry, Cyanide comes up to help him out. Peck went down to about 200 HP. And I have to feel, again, if Ignite had been around, that may have been enough damage to secure a kill on the side of Charu. They're fighting on bottom lane. Well, Libic's going to throw out the lashes on towards Yellowstar, but Yellowstar manages to land the Zenith Braid. Immediately, the Dark Passage pulled out from Libic, but that piercing arrow doing a lot of damage there. The Ignite was ticking on Makla, but he's safe again. So Ignite is now blown, which is very, very key for the next time these fights are going on. I want to go back to the gank up in the top lane where Soez was basically able to walk away. He didn't burn his flash, and because of the exchange with Cubon, where he got the cooldown of Equalize and Ignite, he got managed to get out cleanly and safely. So, at the end of the day, even trades, as far as Fnatic are concerned, but they're not giving up more kills, and that's very key to them clawing back this 2,000 gold difference. So the game is starting to develop. The pressure very much on Fnatic, of course, with that gold lead still in Meteor Maker's favor. They have the Dragon Timer. They did take that one down. There are 2,000 gold lead right now, and that's going to start equating to item advantages. As it is right now, the way that Fnatic have backed, they actually have a slight edge in terms of items. Yeah, so in terms of itemization, because Fnatic have actually been forced back a little more often, it's played into their favor. Yet Libic has got Pushu! He's gonna catch out, but Pushu's safe because immediately comes in Cyanide on towards back to the piercing arrow comes through. It will be enough to lock him up. The Zenith might then the stun on Libic. Can they finish it off? Teleport from Charu though, comes in, gets on towards Cyanide, pops the Cyclone. Cyanide taken low, Makana comes through. Cyanide will go down. He's gonna to try and take Libic with him. Not going to happen. It's a one for one trade so far. Yellowstar now going to get focused in. Absolute zero should lock him up. He's not going to be able to escape this one. It will be a two for one trade, and it's Charu that gets the double. That is terrifying. Charu in the mid lane was falling behind in gold because of Peke's loaded dice. Because of Peke's passive, where he's going to get all of that additional gold. Peke had a sheen and boots of swiftness already completed. Now that Charu's picked up the kills, he's going to close the gap on the gold and start working working himself towards a Hex Drinker and possibly Brutalizer in the not-too-distant future. However, the middle tower goes down. Pekka heading up towards the top. Actually, Destiny is available. Doesn't look like he's going to go for the gang. Charu heads back down towards the ward placement. He's actually put double pink wards in that mid lane. Was trying to keep track of him, but now that turret is down, Pekka is going to be very hard to control. Yeah, Pekka's already signaled he wants to be mobile with the boots choice that he's completed fairly early. He manages to find Makata out who's looking to set up a kill. And you've got to remember that on Wukong, that Cyclone is, is a, it's not too bad of a cooldown. It's a little bit less than two minutes. So it will be available very, very soon. Dragon is about to spawn. They've caught Makla. Oh, Makla completely out of position there. Destiny used. Peke locks him up. Pushy finishes off with that piercing arrow. And that may well signify Fnatic to take that dragon. I don't believe Meteor Maker is going to be able to contest it. Yeah, you got to ask, what on earth was Makla doing there? He had no flash, no cleanse, no support. 
and he was sitting at his opponent's tower. What it has allowed, though, is Mitchell Makers to stack four members in the mid lane, and if they can get the tower for a dragon, they'll be happy with it. And they're going to have to work hard to get this tower down, though. I'm not too sure they've got the damage to drop that turret as quick as possible. The fact that the AD carry isn't there. Dragon's about to drop right now. There it goes. Cyanide closes that one out. They're not going to go towards it, so they traded middle turret for dragon. Remember that Wukong's uh, crushing blow, his Q, does apply damage to towers, so it helps in shredding it all that much quicker. Fnatic, with an instant reply, they're trying to put pressure on this bottom lane tower. Peck is on the way out, but look at Meet Your Makers. They're setting themselves up, maybe to steal the red buff. They've got vision on it, and they realize they're outnumbered. Yeah, it just spawned as well. It's going to be Cocoon landing onto Makata. The Leeson does actually land the kick, will not follow through. He does go towards Makata. Makata takes that dark passage, goes a long way away. Libic puts that box down. Equalizer used out by Coupon as well. Fully defensive work from Meet Your Makers. A little bit of miscommunication there, but on the same token, that completely dissuaded Fnatic from jumping in there. Thanks to the equalizer being down, there was no other way for them to engage. And thanks to this last passage of play, Dragon picked up, Fnatic are now only a thousand gold behind Meet Your Makers. Look at Makata though, he is still down that bottom lane on his own, as you mentioned. He has got Cleanse back up, Flash still not available. Yellowstar locks him down here with his support coming through. I'm not too sure whether he'd escape again. We've already seen him get locked up with one Destiny kill. He's going to make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah, his positioning needs to be very, very important. And this is the time where Fnatic can start to maybe take advantage of Meet Your Maker's weaknesses. MYM do tend to get a little disjointed once we start this roaming game, this roaming phase. And the decision making isn't always the best. So it's up to Fnatic to find those chinks in MYM's armor and exploit them. Okay, so let's look across the board. Now things are starting to slow down. Peke has built himself up a 35 CS lead over Chari. Chari, of course, though, was teleporting around, picked up that double kill, and you mentioned the fact that he did get him back in here. He's still 700 gold behind him in that mid lane. So Peke doing a, a grand job, of course. That passive only helping him out, so a lot of it's coming from there as well as that gold advantage. Look at the AD carries, though. Still pretty close. 500 gold advantage for Makla, who has been down that bottom lane on his own. And the top lane, let's talk about that, because... It's been a pretty close battle between them. The CS advantage is with Kubon, but it's still not made a huge difference. It is still only 200 gold. Yeah, it is a very small amount of gold difference, but it's it's impressive to see Kubon with those high-end numbers. Uh, partially also due to the fact that he is fighting Elise, so every time she's in spider form, kill those little spiderlings, it'll bump up your CS numbers a little bit. But nevertheless, Kubon, he's got his haunting guys completed. He's got magic resist to fend off both Peke and Soaz, and he's getting himself to a, a scary position as Makata is looking to gank his bottom lane. He's lingering around there. The bottom turret is actually pretty low for Meet Your Maker, so if Fnatic were to go in, Cyanide is heading down this bottom area right now. Destiny is available for Peke as well, but Peke's actually gone towards the top area of the map, so he may be looking for the Sonicon towards Soaz there, but Yellowstar's the one that's going to get locked up. Turns out Zen is played in towards Makla, uses the cleanse, but Chain of Corruption follows it straight up. Absolute Zero is going to get knocked straight out by Sino, and Meet Your Makers are in trouble. There's the Destiny. He's desperately running down the bottom. There's going to be possibly a teleport coming out from Charu as well. Libic's actually going to get away. Will Yellowstar go down? The Ignite should be enough to turn him round there. Doesn't get the kill. Yes, he does. Libic goes flying. Here in, comes Charu. Taken down. Charu teleports in, pops the Cyclone. Only catches on towards Pushu, though. Pushu's quite high in the hit points right now. Now the Nimba Strike comes through. That bursts the damage down. Peke's the next focus. Cyanide desperately trying to help him out. They might want to turn this one around. No! Charu had better ideas. And now Cyanide's in trouble. The Ice Blast lands just as he safeguards Ooh. away. It's another double kill for Charu. I cannot believe they turned it around. It was a four for one in the bot lane. Charu is terrifying right Two. now. The amount of damage traded back in fourth was phenomenal. And unfortunately for uh, Fnatic, Charu's teleport came up a couple seconds into the fight. Soaz wants Cubon. Soaz goes in the equalizer term and the shield. And actually, Soaz is going to get turned around and melted by the flame spitter. Cubon just turns that one on his head completely. One or two ticks of the uh, 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 Cataclysm plus Ignite and overheat damage was enough to melt through Soaz. Soaz 0 1 0. And it could be enough time for Meet Jamaicans to take their third tower of the game. So that would be all of the outer turrets going down. That's absolutely going to drop. There's no way anyone's going to be able to get up and talk in time to defend this one. So it's 9 4 to meet your makers right now. Fnatic, who are 0 3 so far this week.
They are 13 and 13, are looking at potentially going 13 and 14 and dropping down to joint sixth place alongside El Clasico partners, SK Gaming. And officially being seventh in the roster thanks to those head-to-heads. Yes. Heads. So we'll have to see how the rest of this game pans out. Every time MYM have made an advantage, Fnatic have clawed it back. After the first few kills in Dragons, Fnatic picked up a, a, a tower in the mid lane. They picked up some kills in Dragon of their own, and they've secured themselves a tower now. So it's still only a 3,000 gold lead, and Fnatic are not completely out of it as is one minute to go before the next Dragon engagement. Currently, it's 305 for Makana on Nunu Jungle. Maybe this is the jungler he's been looking for all season. Maybe this is something that they're going to be looking towards when those spring playoffs come around again back in the winter. And as it stands, though, me, your makers, they're putting up a very good performance. We said they were going to be playing for Pride, and they're certainly making Pride of place against Fnatic. To be fair with, with regards to Makata's jungle, he's invaded, he's stolen a red buff already. He hasn't been playing the counter jungling game. He's been farming up fantastically. He's got 77 CS already in comparison to Cyanide's 52. And every time Makata does gank a lane, it's tended to be the bottom lane with Maklin Libic. He's done the Thresh Lantern gank spin, flung into combat, and he's playing zone control perfectly. So it's not only Nunu working well, he's complementing his carries and everyone else in his team. As you can see, MYM setting up vision control for Dragon. I'm really impressed how much Kubon is actually starting to control and dominate that lane. We saw him go in that 1v1. That was the key battle. Nobody else was involved in it. Kubon won it out on his own. Now, with that extra kill, he's got the hit points as well. He's got the magic penetration. He's doing the damage. I don't believe Soaz is going to be able to go at all in a 1v1 with him. That's why they're both left the lane. He's got a 30 CS advantage as well. But now, the dragon being picked up, or will it be? They're actually stopping. They're going to abandon and go towards Peke and Soaz, who were trying to push them in. MYM are very smart to back away, and there's a number of reasons for this. As a team in the mid game, you never want to challenge a dragon fight against an equalizer of Rumble. The zone control in the river and that dragon pit is so powerful. Combine that with the zone control and damage of Cyclone, and it just gets exponentially more difficult to either pick a fight or steal the dragon. So what uh, MYM are trying to do is use uh, Equalizer from Rumble to possibly defend a tower while the rest of the team safely secures dragon. Exactly what they're doing. It will be a dragon taken for Meteor Makers, the second one of the game for them. Fnatic took the last one, of course. So three dragons down, 2-1 currently to Meteor Makers, which gives them that gold advantage, as well as those towers and those kills. It has put them nearly 4,000 gold in the lead. Red bar, red buff stealing away by the red card, ironically, of Peke. And as it stands, Meteor Makers don't look too happy about that one, but nevertheless, they have full control of the map right now. Just caught a little bit late, and I guess at the end of the day, having Dragon, which is the reason they lost the red buff, is not too bad for them. This is the problem, or this is the problem area for Meteor Makers. In every game we've seen them this weekend, this weekend in particular, once they've got those outer towers down, they tend to stall and run out of gas. And I'd like to see whether or not they've learned from their previous mistakes. They've got a team that can really fight well in the enemy, in the enemy lanes and in the enemy jungle. Four subjectives by sticking together as a five-man and stacking your ultimates on top of each other. Exactly. It's a case of where do they go from here. We see Kubon is in the top lane. Makla was down the bottom farming. We saw Shari was in the mid lane. They were kind of just sticking in the lanes again. So they haven't really they've created those objectives, created those advantages, and don't really follow it up on it. So we'll see if it does work out. We are seeing the three-man stacking that middle at the moment, potentially invade the red buff potentially will be spawning soon. Makata did get steel once over Shari. We'll see whether he can do it again. Getting those aggressive wards. This is what they used to do when they went 4-0 and zero back in DreamHack. They started going full-on aggressive with that wards. They showed cleanly what objective they wanted. In this case, it could well be that bottom inner turret. Yeah, and it's also more important to note that they've got, a, you know, the, the Nunu there as well for counter jungling. Lebek does have flash available if he wants to go over the wall. Could he use the flay to try and pull this one back? He will. He's actually going to pull Makla in instead. There comes Makla, flashes through. And now Makla, oh, had to use the Dark Passage. But instantly comes in the Cyclone and going to try and put the damage down. Will it be enough? Yellow Star's going to be the focus target. They switch it back up to Soaz. Kubon comes around without Flame Splinter, but it's a bit of a disjointed matchup. They do manage to get the one kill on Cyanide. Makla went down in the process as well, so it was a one for one. Not exactly a clean fight, but nevertheless, Meteor Makers managed to escape quite cleanly. Destiny and Teleport was used during the course of that fight, and if you actually look at Kubon's HP, he's still at max. 
if that fight had been on more even terms, Meet Your Makers may have been able to make it work a little bit more beneficially for them. But what they have done is at least shove this mid lane down. They've got no Charu or Makla with them, and those are the two ca tower killing champions. So unfortunately, that push has also stalled. It does force them back, but Makana is continuing to get those ward placements out there. Cleaning up, and that's full ward coverage now. If you look across the jungle, the blue buff, the red buff, everything is completely controlled. So, Meteor Makers right now have a good vision of Fnatic. This is what they've been lacking in previous games. The thing that they need to do is make use of that vision. They need to pick fights, challenge for buffs, and more importantly, secure them if they actually want to pick themselves up a win in this matchup. In terms of the vision control, I do like what they're doing, and you've also got to remember that on 3.10, for your junglers and your supports, you're actually you're a little more open to either spend the gold you would spend on Runic Bulwark on items, or in this case, just spend them on vision control. And the one thing Fnatic is severely lacking is that Oracle's Elixir. We haven't seen anyone pick one up until this very second as Yellow Star is now finally clearing wards. Yeah, and you can see he's already cleared out that top jungle that was just heavily warded up by Makata. You see Libic with his Oracle on of his own. Peke is stopping the stall of Charu, who's been trying to push the lane in every time. Meteor Makers do try and shove that lane back. Fnatic are there, as you say, cleanly defending it. Libic coming around, he's stood on top of a ward. Going to clear that one out with his Oracle. The rest of Meteor Makers are starting to group here in this bottom lane. Kubon, he's in the top lane. Not got any way to Destiny's get close been to channeled. this one. Destiny has been used. Are they going to go for it? It's Libic that's going to get picked off again. He escaped last time. Flash was used. Will not have it available this time around. Piercing Arrow will finish the job. They they can't leave Kubon as the split pusher. Kubon has no teleport. As soon as Kubon was CSing in the top lane, that just signaled to Fnatic, there's a guaranteed advantageous situation here if we jump on you. And MYM just caught a little bit napping. These are the kind of decision-making uh, decisions that have cost them games in the past. Look at Charu's positioning on the side. He oh. may jump in with Nimbus Strike. They actually threw out the uh, cocoon there. Well, not sure where there is a complete guess, but instead they fling Charu in immediately into an equalizer cyclone. Is it going to be enough to turn it around? Charu gets shut down. It's another kill picked up by Pushu. Piercing Arrow thrown out a game. Fnatic are going to back away from this one, but Meteor Makers were nearly caught with the pants down. Yellow started very well there. He threw out the solar flare and completely locked up uh, Mokate, Makla, and Cubon uh, in the back line. They got hit by that ulti, couldn't advance, and they couldn't save Charu. So a good cocoon and then a good ultimate from Yellow Star to actually pick them up that win. And that 3,000 gold lead has completely shrank. It's down to about 1,000 gold now. Yeah, and this is what we've talked about so many times. Meteor Makers, they gain that advantage, they'll get control. And they don't really need to be able to do anything with it. Absolute zero used in that mid lane by McKenna to just clear out that wave. Dragon will be up in 40 seconds. Meal Makers have a good control here. They're going to come around and want to steal away that red buff. They will see it there. They have a four-man <laughs> push on towards it with that consume and smite available. They do it. They use the smite there. 30 seconds until Dragon is up. They use the smite to get the red buff. That is a brave, brave call. And I also think red buff was killing the ward there for a couple seconds. Uh, in terms of... The team fight power now. The ultimates will be available for MYM. So if they do poise for Dragon, they may want to peel away from Dragon and actually pick a fight with Fnatic. But once again, you see Makata just littering the map with wards. He's just throwing them out absolutely everywhere. And Libic and Yellow Star doing the best they can to counter ward and, and get vision back. We should also mention the damage that Peke has now got. He's got that Rabadon's death cap completed and the Lich Bane, as well as the Zonia's Hourglass well under completion. He just needs the lean to large rod and the recipe completion and he'll be happy with that. That's a strong build, Peke, right there. Yeah, it's it's also scary when you think of all the movement speed that he's got. 430 base, thanks to those alacrity, swiftness, boots, plus Lich Bane. And he's going to be split pushing the map. MYM don't have a traditional split pusher on their side or somebody to deal with that split push. So Charu's going to have to respond to wherever Peke is pushing. And the rest of MYM should, in theory, be pushing objectives and waiting for that teleport cyclone to come in to help them win a fight and secure Towers of Dragons. One thing is for sure, if Fnatic are going to win this one, they're going to have to put a lot of work in. Peke, he's going to turn down that bottom. We talked about the Lich Bane. You can see the damage that he's doing to that tower. It will be 3-3 three, three in turrets. Now, Charu is heading up there. Oh, Peke's gone a little bit deep here. Charu's going to get around the backside of him. Kubon's coming from the other side. He's going to get the Nimbus Strike and Cyclone on him. The exhaust was used. Is it going to be enough time to get that destiny away? Will he get out of it? No, he, he does. Did. 
just as the equalizer came in, he managed to get away. Wow. Charu made a mistake that he shouldn't have used Cyclone so early. He should have carried on chasing as long as possible. And when the gold card was about to be primed, then he should have used the decoy. Instead, Charu had thought coming in stealth, he may have had enough damage to instantly kill Peke. And unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. Did not work out, but Mio Makers picked up the dragon off the back of it, nevertheless. And we are going to see Yellowstar. He's going to come in. He's going to try and lock up Makata. Dark Passage thrown out. Chain of Corruption will land, but it doesn't matter. It's countered by that Dark Passage. Makla flashes out of the... Ah, I can never Solo remember play. the damn name of it, but it is going to get away from the Solar Flare, like you're saying. Said they're going to turn this one around now. They're coming back in. Charu is in it. Cyclone is not available, remember. Now it's going to be up in a second. Is it going to have time for to use it, though? Yellowstar's going to get locked up. Spray and Prey doing work. Absolute zero kick to away by Cyanide. Jaru tries to get in, but the decoy is the target they went for. Makata with that Ice Blast continues to slow them down, but now things are equalized. Oh, Jaru tries to go in, gets the Cyclone. Only one spin of it before he goes down. Livic gets dropped. Makla doing damage to the back, just gets melted by Peke. Peke now comes back in. It's a double kill for Soas. The piercing arrow comes through. Kuban's not long in this world. He's going to try and do what he can, but it's a triple kill picked up for Soas. And an ace in response for only losing two players. MYM came in scrappy. They came in side by side. They didn't stack their ultimates crucially. I was talking about how you needed to lock people in place for Cyclone and Equalizer to deal damage. And the one thing I had not factored into my equation is Cyclone is the CC for this engagement. They want to knock people up by Charu and then land the Equalizer along everybody. And because MYM couldn't do that, they were unable to win against a skirmish pick team. Elise, Lee Sin, Twisted Faith, with all the mobility, are going to love running circles around you. Thanks to the ace, Fnatic stop Baron. They're going straight in for Baron and they may well be able to get it before Meteor Makers can respond. No teleport available, remember? Smite is up from Makata. But I'm not too sure he's going to get close enough because Fnatic, they have so much damage. You see Libic clearing out the wards, but then frankly, he's not going to get close enough. Baron's done by Fnatic. So this has just completely swung the game now in Fnatic's favor. They have the gold lead for the first time in 30 minutes. And thanks to all the bonus statistics, they are really in a power position right now. The one thing I am seeing from the builds that is a little confusing for me now, Charu has picked himself up a Warden's Mail as his next item. So it looks to be that he's going towards like a Frozen Heart or something similar. Against a double AP team of Soaz and Peke, I feel like he maybe should have gone for an MR-based item to be able to survive long enough for his full channel on Cyclone. But we'll see how it works out in the actual team fights. We will see because the pressure is definitely back on Meet Your Makers. Fnatic in the driving seat now after having a pretty disastrous lane phase and seems to have turned this one very much into their favor. Meet Your Makers, can they flounder their way through this one? Will they manage to fight their way back or will Fnatic start to bully them and take advantage of Meet Your Makers' lackluster mid-game play? Right now, with the Siege oh. on the bottom tower, that's a piercing arrow that's shredding through Libic's HP bar. The Bloodthirster that's fully stacked there for uh, push you as well as the Last Whisper, is really hitting hard. And Fnatic are going to grab this tower. No way about it. The Meteor Makers can't do a thing to defend that one. They may actually just keep the Siege up because Meteor Makers actually had nothing to respond to that one. Cyclone is back available, as is uh, Equalizer, so they may well fight for this one. The Inhibitor turret by far more important. But again, that piercing arrow, every time it lands, he saw Makla choke his hit points down there. They're desperately fighting here. Meteor Makers have no safe wave clear. One of the flaws in the composition they have right now is defending against sieges because, you know, melee of rumble plus short range flame splitter. Charu stealth up. Ooh. He was looking for it. He was looking for it. no ghost though. So he may wait a couple more seconds for that. Well, they're going to have not have too many more seconds because that tower is going to go on the next wave pull. It's Sinai the hook in. There's going to be the execution. Will they get on towards it? The equalizer. Cyclone, not enough. Sinai not going to get away from this one. He's going to get taken down. Libic drops in return, though. But this is a, still a very close exchange. It's a two-for-two vote two so far. Cyrus tries to get away. The poison ticket might be enough to take him down. That's going to be a cocoon. Peke's going to get away. Soaz escapes with a slither of life and skitters away. But Meteor Makers, they're pushing up the mid lane. They trade two-for-two two as far as deaths are concerned. Makla may catch Pushu. The explosive cask and the ice blast showing down Pushu. Barry is going to come out. Will he be able to turn it around on towards Makla? So, so close there. That damage coming out. This is a barren up for now. 
Fnatic here that got bullied away. Peke's thinking he could turn it around. Instead, can't land the wild card. The perfect team fight for Mincha Makers with Cyclone and Equalizer destroying Fnatic's HP bars. Fnatic were forced to flash out of the damage, and then because they were misplaced and out of position, they couldn't stay in the team fight. I still feel like Charu should have had more magic resistance in that fight to have survived longer, but I'm sure he'll be itemizing towards it as he completes his next couple of big items. It seems to me that he's going for Randian's Omen, though, next, and he, he doesn't really care about it. It's because of the lack of CC. Mm. Randian's Omen, once he lands get in with slows. Cyclone, get the slow down, and because they don't have hard CC, every time I see these team fights, my heart is screaming to me, Libic, why didn't you pick Zyra? And I think it's because MYM are feeling that they can itemize around the weaknesses in that super hard lockdown CC. Well, the blue buff may be focused off target. Remember, Dragon is up in 20 seconds. Looks like Fnatic want to come around here. Libic is there, though, so he's going to see them coming, or is he? They have managed to sneak their way into the tri-bush unseen. They have full vision. They're picking it picks. down. Yeah, MYM have just stuck a ping on the tri-bush. They've got a spidey sense tingling that there's a spider in the bush, and then they're, they're playing this one patiently. Look at the ultimate cooldowns. They are all available right now as the box comes off cooldown, and Libic... Oh, they're split. If you can get the box down in conjunction with everything else, it'll work in favor of MIM. Push who's off the side of this in the piercing arrow. They're actually running towards it. They've spotted it. Look at the speed up. They're trying to get in close to him. They know it's Peke. They want to try and get the focus targets on. That's going to be a solar flare to try and slow them down. It's not going to be enough. That's going to be a cyclone. He catches on towards it. The equalizer on Peke, but he still hasn't gone down. He's going to be able to lay the damage down. Goes into Sunny Night Fever Solar. Standing Zonia's hourglass popped out there, but look at Mackler at the back. He's mowing down Fnatic. Cyclone comes in. Nimba Strike does the job. Push you, the only man standing here. He's going to get knocked down. Another kill for Makla. It's a triple and the ace. Meet your makers. Turn it back around. Makla was completely untouched and with zero vision, zero confirmed information. They read Fnatic like an open book said, we know you're in the tri-bush and we are going to scare you away. They picked a route that didn't put themselves at risk and cut off Push you from the rest of the lines of Fnatic. A very, very good fight for MYM. And if they continue to pick up these back-to-back -back team fights, they're going to secure the next Baron or the Ooh. inner turrets. This is, this is close, close play on the dragon there. That was very close. They're having to use the shield to just make sure McKenna gets away with his life there. But look at Meet Your Makers. They have the gold swing once again. The fourth dragon picked up. Dangerous play. I'm not sure they can get this turret down. Yeah, they can see Cyanide coming in. Going to have to back away from that one. But Makla, more importantly, he picked up three kills. He only has four in the game. That's going to give him a chunk of gold. And it's going to get him back in towards the AD fight because Pushu was winning out quite heavily. So Makla's going to be able to complete his last Whisper. And I would hope he picks up a defensive item like a Guardian Angel, maybe even a Banshee's Veil. Because if Makla can stay alive from the dive from Elise and Twisted Fate or Elise and Lee Sin, it's going to allow the AoE damage of MYM to shred through the rest of Fnatic's lines. And Fnatic, they need to pick and choose their targets. If they focus a damage dealer like Rumble, then Wukong and Twitch kill them. If they focus Twitch, then Rumble and Wukong kill them. There are so many damage threats from MYM that they have to kill them all at once or die trying. And let's not forget the pressure that Fnatic are under while making these decisions. It is high pressure cooker situation. That's why these players right now are paid to play this game. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, they are paid to play this game. I've got to make that important. They are professional gamers. Don't we call it a sport now? <laughs> it, it is a sport, technically, I guess. Esports is what we've been calling it for a long time. These guys are fighting to get to the World Finals. They didn't make it in the summer. Can they make it this year around? Ooh, Libic going ballsy play. Equalizer gets thrown down. Bad. Chain of Corruption. Kubo's going to get melted at the back. That is not a good engage. Spray and Pray was used as well. Charu has to get in there, but that's only a one-for-one -one trade, and it's not a very good one-for-one -one trade of that. If both top laners, Destiny comes out, who are they going to focus on? They're just purely using it for vision. They want to push the mid lane. Peke was looking for an opportunity of where to use. He could use the gate, and it's just timed out. It's no longer available. Now, if any CC lands, this is going to be a dead Peke. Gold card's gone. Peke going a bit too aggressive. He's going to be pushing the Charu dives towards. Can they lock him up in time? He's not going to be able to get the kill. He's gone on his own. And that means he's not going to be able to take him down. Oh, will he? He gets on to push him. The barrier had to be used. He's safe. And Libic gets taken down by Peke at the back as well. That was very bad decision making from MYM. They got split in the mid lane. And I was getting excited because Charu was coming around from the side. I thought he wanted to tower dive with Cyclone. And the moment that Fnatic were no longer at risk of being tower dove, 
MYM tried to back away and they were split. Cubon was alone in the mid lane. The rest of MYM were in the jungle in the bottom half of the map. And Fnatic just went, this works for us. We prefer smaller engages with smaller skirmishes. And they managed to secure that one. And then Charu, dude, 1v3, what do you think is going to happen? But you've got to wonder though. If it wasn't for Barrier against Yellow Star, Pushu, and Cyanide, he would have got the AD carry down. It was That's close. scary for Fnatic because they had to use everything to lock him up, just the one player. That leaves open season for the rest of the team. Equalizer comes in. It's dangerous to do Baron with an Equalizer available. They're going to get it, though. And that's Fnatic. They managed to steal the march on them. Solar Flare onto Kubon. Is it going to be enough to slow him down? Yes, because the Flash Stone Guard to Waffle followed by a Piercing Arrow. And Peke picks up another kill. We do see a teleport coming out now from Tom Macharu Ooh, and actually that. was cancelled when he realized he was so outnumbered. And again, a half-hearted, miscommunicated steal attempt. The equalizer went down. Cubon was looking like he wanted to fight. Makata had flash available and with his smite costume, decided not to flash into the pit and try steal. So a little bit all over the place as far as MYM is concerned. It's a back and forth battle, but nevertheless, Fnatic are going to take down the first inhibitor of the game. Top inner turret is also heavily pressured by minions. Fnatic will rotate straight up to the top there. Cocoon actually landing on Libic, and now back is going to throw out that Ice Blast. Not a great deal they can do about it. It's simply damage control right now for Meet Your Makers. We do see that Kubon will be up in 15 seconds, and that's basically... It's enough for Fnatic to say we've got a very good advantage. We picked up our second Baron of the game, a couple of kills, and a lot of money to spend. And I really want to highlight money at the moment because Peke is sitting on 18,000 gold in total, just shy of it. The money in his back pocket, 1,400, is what he's earned from his passive alone. So in this 40-minute game, thanks to those loaded dice, he's earned himself basically a needlessly large rod in addition. And those are some scary, scary cash values on the side of Fnatic. Oh, we'll see. Of course, he is... Generally, the card master here in Europe has had many a backdoor, and meat makers still need to be aware of that. Now that that inhibitor is down, there's a possibility that he could be knocking on your back door. As it stands, though, Fnatic, they are now in control. It's safe to say it's been a pretty much back and forth match, and I wouldn't say a game of throws, but it's definitely not been a clean one. Yeah, MYM have just been have, have been caught out a little bit. They've made decisions that weren't were questionable, let's put it that way. And right now, Destiny's being used. They're gonna jump on Libic again! I'm not sure if it's the right choice because the rest of Meteor Makers are there, but Peke nearly took down the support player Libic in one foul swoop. So that's partially positive for Fnatic in that Peke's made it very clear he's willing to use Destiny for any odd kill. Any objective, and basically I think he's used it three or four times just for Libic alone. And this is the first time Libic's cleanly got away. However, it's going to cost him this inner turret. He's a brave man to pick on that big guy, but they are going to take themselves another inner turret. And that's the final inner turret of the game for Meet Your Makers. It has dropped. That's 7-4 in turrets, and that continues that gold lead advantage. Remember, they're sitting on Baron still right now, so they've managed to pick up a lot of advantages. It is going to be running out shortly, though. So an open field fight is a little bit more favorable for Fnatic. It's more difficult for MYM to lock them down in all of that AoE. However, in a choke point like on the stairwell, it's much scarier for Fnatic to deal with. So we'll see how long and how brave they are. As there goes Charu. There's the Cyclone and the Equalizer locking up very nicely on Fnatic. This is perfect engagement for Meteor Makers, but Fnatic seems to have the damage to turn it around. Makata locked up low, but that spray and pray doing work from the backside. It's a three for two so far. They're going to try and get on towards Soaz, just off of the right-hand side of the screen. Oh, but look at Peke trying to turn it back around. They quickly skitter away from this one. Libic wants to get a lock in there, but instead they're going to be happy. It's it's a three for two engagement. That was a barren up Fnatic as well. I cannot understand why Fnatic were on the stairwell. It was so clear that MYM had been throwing themselves at them to defend the towers. It's how Fnatic lost the first team fight uh, at the mid lane tower. And as you we were saying, how scary those choke points are. If at any time Fnatic group up, MYM will consistently do that. The cooldowns on the ultimates are low enough for them to just throw themselves at Fnatic over and over again. Well, so as is has a giant wave in that top lane that somebody's going to react to. Peke is going to go in there, teleport towards the top with his destiny, and quickly like that, they take themselves a second inhibitor turret. Meet your makers it's floundering, not reacting to that. Yeah, they weren't expecting that one at all. Even though there was a big minion wave, you see in that uh, Cubon was staying in lane with Peke and saying, well, I'll defend the tower when you get here, not remembering that destiny had not been used in the previous fight. So another good pickup by Fnatic. And remember, this is a game about objectives. Towers inhibitors, those are the things that count. And right now, Fnatic have double them at what MYM does. Yeah, 8-4, the gold advantage still, still very tight. It's 2,500 gold for Fnatic. 
24 to 21 in kills. Definitely a lively affair, this one. The first game of the final day of Super Week and the final day of the summer split before we move in towards the regional playoff finals that will be happening in just a couple of days' time. Gold Advantage will continue to go in Fnatic's favor as they take down another Dragon. Dragons actually have been fairly even so far in this game, pretty well evenly traded. And honestly, in terms of kills, advantages, it's still pretty close. Meteor Makers just proved there the fact that they could fight openly against Fnatic, even in a slightly enclosed environment with the Baron, Fnatic cannot take anything for granted right no, now. They, they can't put themselves in another position like that. And right now, the one thing I do want to highlight about any of these future fights, especially on MYM's side of the base, thanks to the immense amount of area of effect damage, MYM actually have a little bit of an easier time defending against minion waves that have amassed without Fnatic's presence there. So you can see that even though there's been super minions in this mid lane, they actually haven't even made it to the stairwell of MYM because thanks to everybody's sort of splash damage right now, especially when they start adding some of the AoE ultimates in there, they can clear those waves clearly and any super minion stacks will be dealt with efficiently and quickly. And I should also point out that Libic actually is a little bit fearful to leave their base right now because every time he goes out, I'm just going to ward control, guys, don't worry, I've got this. Destiny comes up, Peke's on his face. He hasn't managed to kill him in a little while, but yes, Disney is, uh, Peke's pick power is basically what he's been doing every single time. And this is what I was afraid of, is how do MYM deal with a split push? Peke is now bottom lane, he's got all of this immense mobility, so it's very hard to chase down, even just on foot. And who do MYM send? It has to be Charu, but they also need a Cyclone for that 4v4 and 5v5 fights. Yeah, Makta's going down towards the bottom lane, which means that big wave that Fnatic were pushing. Will be left alone, but no, he's going to clear that one out. Had to make sure that Peggy didn't sneak in. He's putting a lot of damage on towards those turrets every time he gets close to it. It's what he does. It's simply what he's known for. And you'll make us out defending this one out. Baron will be up in 34 seconds. That is definitely Fnatic's next target. The question is, can... Meet your makers, defend it. So with the inhibitor just respawning, Fnatic may decide to bait a Baron and pull MYM towards them, and then either loop around to rush down the inhibs, because there's two of them exposed, or alternatively, obviously, win a pick fight. The key for MYM to winning any of these fights now is to not die before they stack their ultimates together. They cannot afford to walk in one by one and lose a Libic, a Makra, even a Charu early on. And you can see that by that very deep warding. Fnatic are poised. A very, very cautious dark passage thrown out as well by Libic to make sure they get the vision. They are going to clear out. Solar Flare could be used in. McKenna's actually going to get locked up. And that's a cocoon on Libic. A lot of control, the piercing arrow. So, Miyamaker's being poked down fairly heavily here. Charu, you can see, is in the bottom lane right now. Does have teleport. There's them wards that he can teleport on towards. They're, they're going to have to back away. They've taken way too much poke here. Libic's going to have to go back to base. Yeah, at this point in time, because of the, the lack of long-range poke, now all of a sudden, MYM are at a massive disadvantage in this fight. Teleport is coming in, and here comes Charu. Here comes Charu, and they've backed away. They've peeled off the Baron, actually keeping the damage alive on it. They've shredded it down to about just under 8,000 hit points now. Keeping those piercing arrows flying. Mia Makers are going to have to do something. Destiny used. Where's Peke going? He's going for the back door. Of course he is. Where else would Peke head towards? He's going to draw Mia Makers away. It's decision time, Mia Makers. Do you defend the Baron or do you defend the inhibitor? The Baron looks like it's going to be the go for. They missed it. They're too slow. Solar Vag comes in. They're going to miss the inhibitor as well. Peke's going to take that down. Would you believe it? All the advantages in towards Fnatic. Yeah, absolutely not. They didn't com commit to one plan or the other. Now Makla is jumping onto Peke. Quick Silver Sash is up. However, both inhibitors are down, Fnatic are going to be super happy with that. Absolutely great decision making by Fnatic on the equalizer, kind of wasted there on towards Fnatic. That's not going to lock anyone down. They're desperately trying to lock down Soaz. The flash is coming out. Can he get the harpoon onto anyone? He Soaz is the target he wants. He does manage to get the slowdown, but Cyanide's going to turn around in reflective. Cyanide will not be able to repel away from this one. Hayes the blue buff up. No, can't get towards it. Repels away. Makla takes him down. For well, Meteor Makers, they're going to have to just turn and burn right now. They have 40 second death time is on Peke, 60 seconds on Soaz, they have to go aggressive. So they're trying to force down this middle lane, but they've got to deal with super minions first. They cannot afford to tank up the tower for too long. Now, Cubon's equalizer is about 50% available as they jump onto the inner turret. 25 seconds on Peke, Destiny will be up as he spawns. Can MYM get to the inhibitor? That's the real question. Oh, they're going to have to push for it, but look at this, Fnatic are ready and waiting. Pushu does try and clear out that wave. Solar Flare is available and could 
lock them up quite nicely here. Pushu trying to be aggressive. Absolute zero flash in there. Yellow Star taking very low. Makana is going to get taken down. They went for kills. They need objectives. And that's not going to give them that tower. Not and now dead. they're in all sorts of trouble. Peke respawns. There's the destiny. Gets on towards Charu. That's another kill. Fnatic can win. Fnatic. They're going to just finish this one out. They can close up. They can just run straight at the mid lane. Meet your makers completely out of position. What a dramatic turn of events. Every single time one team gets the minutest of advantages, their opponents respond in kind. Now, Cubon and Libic have the box and the equalizer available, and with super minions almost at the Nexus turrets, it's a matter of time until Fnatic can get on them. Poshu is at a basically full build on that Varus, and he will destroy these Nexus turrets. There's nothing they can do about this one. The in third and final inhibitor is available. They don't need it, in all honesty. There goes the super minions coming up that mid lane. Fnatic have plenty of time. 20 seconds in a 2v5 situation. Libic gets caught. Libic gets locked up. Libic gets killed. The next to Nexus turret will go down. There's one. The second will follow. This will be Fnatic. It's been a hard fought game. Meet your makers have pushed them all away. But Fnatic move joint third place with Evil Geniuses right now on 14 13. The pressure cooker situation has been relieved ever so slightly by Fnatic. They have one more match today. It's against Gambit, and it's the last one of the day. And they definitely wanted to give us a heart attack while this game was going on. A very slow, shaky start for Fnatic, but they bounced back. They played the map perfectly, and thanks to a few misplays from each of makers, unfortunately, they give up their 19th loss of the split. But it was a valiant effort nonetheless. Well, Fnatic fans, you've definitely been pushed through the ringer right now. That was a valiant performance by Meet Your Makers. And we talked about it when they had those big advantages early on. The mid-game, they seemed to fall away. They just didn't seem to be able to just push the advantage that they create. And Fnatic grasped that. They seized the opportunity. It was back and forward. Let's not forget, there was a lot of times that it was going Fnatic's way.